Now, The Hill has reported that Senator Barbara Mikulski will now support President Obama's nuclear deal with Iran, all but assuring agreement will survive an attack in the Senate. So basically, what they have is that they have gotten enough senators together to defeat a filibuster. Now, that's good news for proponents of the Iran deal. Now, uh, she said, no deal is perfect, especially one negotiated with the Iranian regime. I have concluded that this joint comprehensive plan of action is the best option available to block Iran from having a nuclear bomb. For these reasons, I will vote in favor of the deal. Now, President Obama has been actually pretty successful whipping up support for the deal uh, in Congress. And uh, a lot of Democrats have rallied, except for Chuck Schumer, who's kind of a douche. Yes, Chuck Schumer is a douche. But the other Democrats, as I said, they've rallied around the deal since leaving town in August, giving Obama to the, th uh, the 34 senators he needs to back the agreement and uphold a potential veto of a resolution of disapproval. Now, Mikulski was actually one of the 11 remaining undecided Democrats. Opponents needed all 11 to buck Obama and vote against the deal if they were going to be able to block it in the Senate. Now, she said, while reviewing the deal, she focused on a handful of questions including whether it blocks Iran from getting a nuclear bomb, what sanctions would be lifted, and if a better alternative could be reached if Congress rejects the deal. Now, Republicans on this, well, they've wanted to reject the deal, rip it up, and basically say, okay, Iran, we don't like your deal. Let's go back to the negotiating table. Now, I don't quite believe that. I think Republicans are interested in war. I think Republicans are more interested in invading Iran than actually going back to the negotiating table with Iran. But nonetheless, the article continues. Republicans have argued the Obama administration could force Iran back to the negotiating teal, uh, table, but Mikulski said on Wednesday that the two alternatives to the deal were either more sanctions against Iran or military action. Now, I'll note that the sanctions have been incredibly successful. Then again, it's been very successful at crushing the people as well. So, but nonetheless, it, it seems to have crushed the people and the, the economy enough to get the mullahs to actually want to say, okay, yeah, yeah we, we give, we get, no mas, we're done. Let's, let's make a deal, okay? Now, um, let's see. Mikulski says maintaining or stepping up sanctions will only work if the sanction coalition holds together which it might not, because she says it's unclear if the European Union, Russia, China, India, and others would continue sanctions if Congress rejects this deal. At best, sanctions would be porous or limited to unilateral sanctions by the U.S. She said, adding that the military option is always on the table for the United States. Now, as I said, I'm not comfortable with that. I, I don't like that. I, I, I think a war with Iran would be incredibly stupid. I would warn against that because think about it. Another, another Iran is huge. It's much bigger than Iraq was. And you see what kind of mess we created there. So military action should be the absolute last resort. Last resort. I would not go there unless we absolutely had to. Now, what's funny is that Mikulski is a very avid Israel supporter. So seeing her sign on to the deal, that's kind of a big deal. Saying deal twice, yeah. I know. Uh, now, on Israel, Mikulski says, I have been an unabashed and unwavering supporter of Israel. I have persistently supported the sanctions that brought Iran to the table. With the horrors of the Holocaust in mind, I have only been deeply committed to the need for a Jewish homeland, the state of Israel, and its inherent ability to defend itself. Now, Mikulski added, that in the wake of the Iran deal, the United States must reaffirm our commitment to the safety and security of Israel. Well, don't worry about that, because we already do defend Israel. Now, we disagree with Netanyahu. Why? Because Netanyahu is a fucking right-wing warmonger. He hates the deal, despite the fact that Mossad, Israel's own spy agency, says, hey, you know what, they're not developing nuclear weapons, guys. They're, you know, we're, we're doing a pretty good job. The deal would actually work. Netanyahu says, no, 
I want to invade Iran. Why? Why? I don't understand why. So, Mikulski is reaffirming her ties to Israel, which, look, I think Israel has a right to exist. I also think Palestine has a right to exist. But that's a completely different subject. That's a completely different argument here that I'm not going to really get into. But this deal will help Israel. It will keep nuclear weapons out of the hands of Iran for at least the next 10 years. Now, what's great about this, and there's some, there's some different points within this, that this will basically allow for a veto-proof majority. So the deal is essentially done. Now, as I said, it's got to go through the normal things, and you know things could change, people could drop out, and all that. But as it stands now, this is pretty big news. This means that it's kind of a win for Obama, and I think it's also a win for America at this point. Now, the deal... No deal is perfect, and I've said this many times before. No deal is perfect, but however, this could be a first step, and it could lead to more things. Now, I know we've got some prisoners in Iran, and the right has been making a lot of hay about it, right? Now, I think we should negotiate to release those prisoners, but I don't think it should be contingent on this specific deal. What this deal does is it allows us to go in later, once we've established some decent diplomatic ties then we can go and negotiate like hey um we want our people back now you know we're we're, we're gonna play nice we're gonna let diplom diplomacy play out and since we're doing that well i would like to have our people back negotiation imagine that it's a great thing and counter to the narrative that you hear from uh fox news and people on the right is that it will prevent a nuclear iran at least as said for the next 10 years and it will protect Israel as well. And, and this is really fascinating. New polling shows that a majority of Americans actually want the deal. Now, The Hill actually reported yesterday that a new survey shows that a majority of Americans do want Congress to uphold the Obama administration's nuclear deal. And this uh, was a survey from the University of Maryland. And in this survey, 55% of respondents said... Congress should get behind the agreement, despite some concerns, and I think those concerns are valid, especially the question of what happens after 10 years. Well, if Iran actually is, is cool with the deal, right, and they honor the deal by not breaking it, and they actually start getting, you know, some of their money back, and their economy gets better, and things like that, well, that's going to help them out. They're going to be happy with that meaning that they're probably going to try and sign on for another 10 years or make another deal in the interim. And that's a good thing. Diplom diplomacy works. Diplomatic relations helps between two countries. Now, 23%, however, say that uh, lawmakers should instead ratchet up sanctions, which, as I said, they've been incredibly effective. However, if China and Russia and the rest of these countries in Europe back out, how effective are they going to be? Not very. And of course, we're going to lose what we gain from the deal, which is, of course, um, preventing Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. 14% wanted officials to go back to the negotiating table, which is understandable. Now, here's a key stat. 61% of independents recommend that Congress approve the deal. Independents. So we've swung independents as well as 72% of Democrats. And we got about a third of Republicans that are uh, expressing the support for this deal. Now that, of course, uh, just shows the whole partisan divide over this. Now, as I'm going to point out in a story later, perhaps if Trump were to say, hey, let's make this uh, deal with Iran, I guarantee you would get more Republicans on it. But as I said, I'm going to get into that later. So as I said, there are valid concerns, and one of them is that Iran has broken previous deals. So we can't exactly trust them. You'd be crazy to trust the mullahs. I don't trust the mullahs. But I do trust in the act of diplomacy. I think diplomacy is the answer. Now, this also, the poll, is a huge change from just another poll that was taken a couple of weeks ago, earlier this month. 
or well, earlier last month, I should say. This poll, well, this previous poll showed that Americans, two to one, actually wanted Congress to reject this deal. So it's been very successful. As more details come out about it, and as the president continues to push it more, and the lies from the right wing are being debunked, people are saying, oh, you know what, it's not as bad as we thought. So remember, there's another survey that said that Americans really didn't really ever even understand what was inside the deal, what was part of this deal. Now that we know a little bit more about it, I think that makes people feel better. And that's kind of the takeaway from this. So, as I said, it, it, this, is a, this, is a, this is a big deal. This will hopefully cement peace in the region and allow for further diplomacy. So as I said, man, diplomacy works when we use it. And hopefully this will be a lesson to future politicians and presidents that, yes, diplomacy does work.